Hi everyone. I hope you're all having a great week. Here laid out on my table are all the supplies I'm going to be using to create this week's video. Um, I've laid out the paints that I'm going to use. I will for sure be using a light red, nickel azo yellow and neutral tint and may or may not add quinacridone deep gold. Not sure yet. Um, I'm using some gold by Kramer Pigmente. And I'll be using a number 14, number 7, number 5, and a micro mini brush. I also like to work with this pen here. Uh, it's a fountain pen with really dark black ink and I really like it. And I also like to work with this Zig Writer. It's got two tips and I use the 0.5 millimeter tip. Use paper towel, reuse paper towel that I like to keep because of its beautiful colors and then I can create projects with it. Also be using water and of course my palette, which uh, in this palette, most of the colors, the colors that are laid out here are already on here. I've taped down my paper. It's hot press watercolor paper by Canson this time. I tape it down so that it doesn't move on me when I'm working and also because it also will, it prevents the paper from buckling. And that's it. Let's get going. I went to get going and intuition kicked in and I thought I'm going to do things a little bit differently this time. Well, somewhat differently, I guess. So I'm going to use this roll of tape to draw a circle and then I'm going to pull out my circle guide and I'm going to draw a couple more circles around it and you'll see what I'll, I'll do with that later. But um, my intention is that this will either be a sun or a moon, not sure yet. Using my circle stencil, I'm then gonna draw two smaller circles inside that bigger circle that I first created with the roll of tape. And you don't really need to have a stencil like this. I use it somewhat frequently, I guess, um, because it's just easier. But if I had, I did, if I didn't have a stencil like this, I would just pull out whatever lids I can find from different jars or bottles and I would use that instead. My intuition has kicked in again and I've decided that I want to paint a sort of sky color, I guess, at the very top of my painting. And to do this, I'm going to mix a few colors together. And I'm realizing that I did not put that color out. So the blue that you're seeing right now is called Intense Blue, Thalo Blue. And I'm mixing it with some light red and eventually I'll also add a little bit of neutral tint. But what I'm trying to create is a sort of bluish gray and that's why I'm adding a little bit of that light red. You'll see here that I added a little bit too much and it created a brown, but that's okay. I'll add more of that blue and it'll bring it back to the color that I want. I'll add some more water, also a little bit of that neutral tint and I'll get exactly the color that I want. I've pulled a tube of that intense blue I was telling you about out of my drawer so that I can show you what it looks like. So again, I'm using this blue, a little bit of light red, and some neutral tint as well as lots of water to create the color I want. Watercolor is always dry lighter than when they are first applied. So when I'm applying this color, I'm actually pretty satisfied with how pigmented it is. It's pretty light and it's gonna dry even lighter. And that's exactly what I'm trying to go for. The only place I don't intend to apply this wash is where I drew the smallest circle for, at this point, I think it'll be a sun and I'm just gonna leave that white. The rest of the paper will for the most part be colored with this very light wash of blue. When my husband and I first met, we lived in Colorado for a while and we traveled Colorado quite a bit and also spent a lot of time in Utah. And I haven't been since we left almost four years ago and I have to say I, I really miss that part of the country. 
you wouldn't really think that the desert would be a very colorful place to be but it actually is and it is so beautiful so I'm going to try to recreate some of those views that I remember loving so fondly when we lived in the western part of the country I'm not using a reference photo for this painting. I'm basically using the images that are dancing in my head from the time I spent in Colorado and Utah. And from that starting point, I'm building a painting following my intuition and what I remember loving about those views that I loved looking at. As I'm using my intuition and my imagination to build this painting, of course it's not going to be purely based on reality and I don't think you'll find this view anywhere other than in my mind. So it's more of an interpretation of the views that I used to love looking at and I hope that, you know, it, it can inspire you to, to try building your own desert via the painting process. When I applied my first layer or wash of light red, I was really trying to just uh, feel my way through the shapes that I wanted to create. And once I was satisfied with the shapes that I created, I went in with a little bit more light red, this time a less diluted form of the light red so that I could start darkening the shapes and make them more prominent in my painting. While my paint was still wet, I grabbed some of that nickel azo yellow and I started to dab some of it inside the different shapes that I could see. Of course, there's a lot of that light red that you can see in the desert, but there are also a number of different shades of yellow and gold that you see in the desert as well, and I wanted that to re be reflected in my painting. As you can see, nickel azo gold is a very vibrant color, and even when it dries, it tends to retain its vibrancy, and for that reason, I really like this color. And I use it not only in desert paintings, but I use it a lot in some of my other paintings as well. The paint on my paper is still wet and I'm going to continue adding to it. Now this is going to create some blooms and a number of different textures that I actually like and think work really well for this type of painting. So I'm not too concerned about that. But these are things to be mindful about when you're painting with watercolors that as the paper is drying, if you add more paint to an area that has started to dry, it's going to have some effects that you want to be mindful of and if that's what you're going for great if it's not what you're going for then you know it's it's something to keep in mind if you've watched a number of my videos i'm sure you've noticed that i'm not too overly concerned about blooms and creating textures in my painting in fact when I'm working, I like to use a lot of water because it does create different textures and different shapes in my painting. And I like using those shapes to my advantage. So for me, it helps me in my intuitive painting process. Before all of this dries, I want to start adding to the bottom of my painting and I want the paint that I'm adding on the bottom to start blending into the paint that I've added into the middle section. Not only that, I'm also adding some of that neutral tint that I put on the bottom into the rocks that I created on the top. Again, that's going to change some of the values of the color. It's going to create different colors like this nice uh, earthy brown that just was created. And this is going to help to replicate some of those textures that you see in the desert. You'll probably notice if you've ever been to the desert that the rocks you're looking at aren't just one single color. They're a variety of different colors and they have a lot of texture and a lot of patterns and uh, just interesting shapes. So it's probably one of the reasons why the desert continues to be one of my uh, great sources of inspiration. It's, it's just so beautiful. There's always something new to see when you're in the desert. 
Now I'm mixing a little bit of that nickel azo yellow into my light red and I'm adding a little bit more color into the wet paint. I'm feeling satisfied with the colors I've created on the top. So now I'm going to just intensify that neutral tint on the bottom before I stop to let this whole layer dry. After letting this first layer dry, I go back in and repeat the process to intensify my colors. Since you've already had a chance to see me do this once, I'm not going to make you sit through it all over again. I'll speed through the video and you can just revisit what I did in the first part because it's basically for the most part exactly the same thing except I'm just adding more intense color and brightening up my colors. Um, the, adding these layers, these new layers, is going to make my colors more vibrant. Now it's time to let this second layer and final layer of paint dry before moving on to the next part of the process in which I will pull out my pens and start adding some more detail. When it's time for me to start adding details to a painting using ink, I usually like to work with this Pilot fountain pen. The reason I like to work with a fountain pen rather than a felt tip pen is that watercolor paper tends to be a bit rough and it can really wreak havoc on my markers. Using a fountain pen like this with a metal tip really doesn't do any damage to the pen and I get to apply a really dark amount of that black that I like so much. I feel really blessed that I got to spend as much time as I did in Utah and Colorado. I really love the desert. I, I don't know why it's so appealing to me, but I mean, looking at the, the different formation, like rock formations and all the beautiful colors there are to see, um, it's really quite impressive. But another thing that I found so impressive when I was looking at all those beautiful rock formations and rock features is that they almost always seem to defy gravity. And I'm trying to replicate that to a certain extent as I'm adding my rocks into my painting with my pen here. I want to try and replicate that almost, you know, sense of how could it be that these rocks are just standing up and they're not just falling. In case you've never had a chance to go to the desert, here's a picture Damien took of my mom, my dad and I when we were visiting Arches National Park. This is a feature called Balanced Rock and really it's, it's awe-inspiring. It's amazing that it's just sitting there, this big boulder on top of this little thing and it's not tipping over. Next I'm using the fine tip end of my zig marker to create a light outline around the rocks that are in the background of my painting. Now I've pulled out my Kramer paints, they're iridescent paints, and my micro mini brush and I'm using bright gold pearl to start painting the ring around my sun. For the circle representing the sun itself, I'm going to use star gold and that's the color that's right next to the one I was just using. Mm -hmm. 
As you can see, I also added some gold to the rocks down below. And I thought I had recorded this part of the process, but unfortunately, I forgot to turn on my camera because as per usual, I was having way too much fun. Um, so sorry about that. Um, basically, I just used my micro mini brush and I dabbed a little bit of both of those golds into some of the rocks down below just to create a little bit more balance in my painting. For all you brave and curious souls who made it this far into my painting process, I have a bonus tip for you. Sometimes when you're working with lots of water using watercolor paints and artist tape, the paint can seep underneath the paint and leave this. I can remedy this problem simply by using a damp brush, not too much water, and doing a little bit of rubbing over the paint and then using a piece of clean paper towel to dab the paint off. The paint comes off for the most part but some of it sometimes can get left behind. So when this happens I like to use a bit of white gouache and I paint over that. And bonus tip number two, here's a solution when some of the tape starts to lift or tear your paper. I use a mix of matte medium mixed with water, uh, which creates a almost gluish kind of paste. I use a little bit of that on the tip of my brush and I simply brush it over the area of the paper that was lifted by the tape. And this usually helps to pat it down. And here it is, my finished painting. I am really happy with how it turned out and it was kind of a really fun project to create because it helped me reminisce back to those days where we were living in Colorado and visiting Utah. I hope this has inspired you to create your own little desert landscape. Thank you for joining me on this journey. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating!